Okay, George, I'm going to record this. Um, Monica's talking with uh, Wanda. I thought I'd get it done out of the way. Uh, the ongoing reality of spiritual warfare. Um, we don't need to take it personally, I said at the beginning. We call this spiritual warfare. We need to know that that the, you know, it's not we creating it, we're being under attack. And I think when we know we're under attack, uh, we feel better about it that someone's trying to mess us up. And that's why I got to arm up every day. So on the next page, 78, um, you know, our, the, yeah, the, there's a, you know, flesh, world, and devil. When I see that, like, you know, one, two, three, punch, you know, the one, two, punch staggers us, and then boom, Satan comes in and gives us the knockout punch um, if we're not ready. So it says that because spiritual battle is invis invisible, more times than not, we forget about the presence and power of this warfare. That's what I'm saying. we got to realize, I mean, some people are way on the extreme saying everything's warfare. I dropped my pencil. Oh, I'm being attacked. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of a little bit crazy. Um, so I just realized that, hey, listen, we are we are under attack all the time. And um, we need to know that and be aware of it. Not to say that everything is like, you know, an attack. Anything that happens, we slip and fall or, you know, something knocks over. It's just that that's why our mind is so important to be filled let this mind be in you that is Christ Jesus. You know, our faith struggles with God. You know, the deceive, I like this, the deceive, uh, deceives, distracts, discourages, and then divides, division. Puts a wedge between us that God, um, that God could put a hedge around us. He puts a wedge, God puts a hedge. And um, it says, even if we're aware, you may be hesitant to acknowledge this struggle. Why would you be hesitant? Because we take it personally, that's why. Um, and we're not prepared. God God, God struggles with God. You may not know how to address them or have a desire to, you know, act upon them. I said, you know, don't be a, a product of your circumstance. Um, I think you said that. No, you didn't. <laughs> Don't be a product of your circumstance. Um, I think it's very important. Um, we are a product, whether a good product or bad product, out of our circumstance that we know once we um, we go through it. There's battles with doubt, battles with despair, battles with distance. Um, basically, this whole thing is talking about battles. Anger, anger with God, 79 at the bottom, it says, this understand an understanding of anger causes us to pause and consider the reason why you are angry with God. Um, I get upset at this, you know. We first accuse God of not being good. God is love. Um, people are blaming now about Christianity, um, or not Christianity, about you know Trump. He says he's a Christian. I never thought that. I don't care what comes out of his mouth. I don't care. But you can't blame people and say, that's a cop-out, you know. It's like saying, you know, like, I had a bad time in my life. Oh, my kids, then are going to hold on to that the rest of their life. Oh, they're not Christian because of that. That's wrong. It's it's just, I don't I don't like that. That's totally, remember, Darla, he, she didn't blame, she didn't blame them. She claimed them. So um, people want any excuse to, to support their beliefs of not wanting to, uh, Follow God. Living below the clouds on 82nd, we might accuse God of not being loving. We accuse him of not caring because we know he could have prevented the evil. Uh, that's living below the line. Not taking responsibility, um, you know, for for their actions and stuff. I remember below the belt, below the line, you blame and claim. No, blame, complain, and defend. So you know you're living below the line. All right. Um, or we can seek to control every aspect. Yeah, I like this here. Uh, we will lack peace. In this, oh, when we when we do lack peace, you know, when I'm not in a peaceful mind like I have now, guess what? It does drain you. 
<laughs> no doubt about it. Oh, I didn't like this last line. A little pushback. Um, you probably did too. Or we can ask to control every aspect of our lives right about in the middle of the page and convince that there's no one else can take better care of ourselves than ourselves. I, I kind of know what he says, but I think it's wrong that no one else can make a better decision to take care of ourselves but God, you know. I don't know. It's just like, what? That's all like a me thing. Well, the only one that can uh, take care of us better is take care of us better than ourselves. Or we seek to control every aspect of our lives, convinced that no one else. Oh, I apologize. I just read it. That's a, or we control every aspect of our life. Yeah, that's the selfish thing. My bad. I read that this morning. My one buddy just said, you know, I, I sent group. It's a, my group. Thing now instead of uh, for my clients I'm like, and I got another client today praise God so he said do it into the morning or late at night so I don't know I, I'm going to have to do this for I'm going to have to get up earlier than I did today I began up early but when I get up earlier I can get a lot done and, and, and be productive when we trust God trust that God is our help and shield we can rejoice we can wait on the hope for the Lord to work. According to his promise, we rejoice. When we are convinced of his unfailing love, convinced we can rejoice. Not just have head knowledge, but have heart knowledge. How do we battle against these struggles? Um, we don't have a chance of battling against these struggles on our own, and we don't. Um, if we do on our own, this is my ADD kicking in, you know, you probably can read and Cause right then at first I thought before, but we can't do this on our own. We think we can and we justify and we blame and complain and defend, but we can't. How can we come say he doesn't love? Okay. I, I love this. Yeah. When you think of the cross, the top of night 81, 81, that when we profoundly think of the cross, that while we were yet sinners, he died. He loved us that much. How can he be a, a mean God? Throw through the struggles of brokenness in our hearts and relationships. can be confident that God will restore brokenness through this story if we abide in Christ. Abide in him. It's again, I mean, everything goes back to realizing the fall, realizing the redemption of the cross, realize that we're saved, realize that we need to share, but we all, we need to abide in him. Trust, obey, abide. Mm. I mean, that's the key. Tomorrow, um, let's see, there's one, two, three questions. One, two, three, four, five. So that's eight questions. Look ahead. So maybe we'll do like last time. One, two, one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, kick. One, two, three, four, kick. <laughs> Anyways, so that's my take. Um, oh, so guess what? Yeah, they they uh, redetermined, did a redetermination, the appeal board, and said, yep, you're right, Mr. Major. We owe you, you know, extra money. We shortchanged you, thank God. And the overpayment of 8000 now that's that's gone. So I don't know what that was about. So I praise God for that. So that's really, like, you know, a huge thing. Um, doesn't mean we're living in luxury, no, but we're not. We had to take almost all our savings out to pay the bills, but we can replenish it now. Um but I got, like I said, another client starting to build some. Can't wait to do our thing. Um, they keep me up to date on that, and we'll go from there. So, all right. Love you, brother. Appreciate you. You have a blessed day, okay? Thank you. Bye.